The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayati zamanun ala ummati. There shall come a time upon my ummah, upon my nation, upon the people who follow me, upon the people who believe in me. They call themselves Muslims and believers. My ummah, when their prayers are not prayed correctly, and when high buildings spread in every place, when people swear in the name of Allah a lot about everything without fulfilling their oath, people curse each other a lot. Bribery and adultery prevails. People neglect the hereafter in order to buy the luxuries of this world in exchange for the hereafter. So people become materialistic. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ذَلِكَ فَالنَّجَاةَ النَّجَاةَ If you see this happening in your time, then seek refuge, seek refuge. Find a solution to get away from all of this. It's not an easy solution. But you need to stay away from all this. In one other hadith, a man said, Ya Rasulullah, what is seeking refuge? How do I seek protection? What do you mean by that? And Rasul Sallallahu gave an expression like this. He said, by adhering to your house and keeping your mouth shut and hold your tongue and hand from doing unlawful until death comes to you. There's going to come a time even worse than this one, brothers and sisters, where a person becomes so confused about what is happening in the world, so deluded by everything that they see and hear, that they're not going to know what to do and where to go and who to stand with, except to stay away from things, even if they mean sitting at home, abstaining from all of this, because there's not much they can do anymore. They want to do good, but where do they go? They want to avoid the bad, but it's all the way, all around. I heard a lot of young people say to me now, why does Islam say everything is haram, haram, haram? This is not true. Islam does not say everything is haram. But when there's so much haram around us and corruption, Islam looks like it's forbidden everything. But because we live in a time where the Prophet wasallam told us that sins will be taken lightly and that modesty will be very invaluable, which leads us to that human life becomes invaluable. Human life becomes invaluable. The hadith of the Prophet wasallam, all these hadiths can be found in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari, and Tirmidhi, and Abu Dawood. These are called the six books of hadith, Numajah and Nisa'i. The Prophet wasallam, is telling us, prayers are not prayed correctly. People pray without really meaning to pray anymore. Their five daily salat are done in a hurry, in a rush, with neglect. Uh, no importance is taken to them. If money comes in the way, the prayer is lost. The prayer is delayed. If a boy wants to meet a girl to chat her up and it's time for salat, he'll ignore the salat. If there is something of worldly benefit to them, the salat becomes the last thing on their mind. One brother said to me once, Brother, I don't pray Jumu'ah because I work. He said, have you tried to seek time off? He said, no, because Islam says to me that I have to look after my family. The response to that is obvious. If it wasn't for Allah providing you with this family, you wouldn't have a family, Aslan, in the beginning. When you turn away from Allah and become ungrateful to Him and rely on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah describes this type of family like the family of the spider in the Qur'an. The family of the spider is very weak, it falls apart. It's not stable. Then he said, high buildings are spread everywhere. This hadith also comes in a different manner. When Jibreel alayhi salam once entered, he sat as a man. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, we saw this man enter one time. And the Prophet sallallahu was sitting with us in the masjid. And this man who entered, he had a very black beard with very black hair and a very white thobe, clothing. 
He did not look like he was traveling because you couldn't see any dust on his clothing and none of us knew him. So who was this man? They didn't have airplanes in those days and cars to travel very quickly. And he sat to the Prophet ﷺ very respectfully. He asked him several questions. And the last of the questions he asked him was this. Mata sa'a? When is the last hour? And at every time he would say to him, you are truthful, you are truthful. They thought, how come he's asking him questions and saying that you, he is truthful when he's the questioner? And then he's telling him that you've said the truth. As though he is testing him. In the end he said, when is the last hour going to come? When's the world going to end? And he said, the questioner who is asking me, or the person you are asking, is no more knowledgeable about its, hour, about its time than the questioner. Meaning, you and I don't know. I don't know any better than you. So we asked him, what are its signs, some of its signs, when it comes close? And he mentioned two things, very important. أَن تَلِدَ الْأَمَةُ رَبَّتَهَا When the mother, the servant of Allah, is one meaning, is probably the most likely meaning. When the mother gives birth to her daughter or son, and this daughter becomes like a boss, a master over her, as if her mother is her slave. In another hadith, Rasul said, when the son, when the son, the boy, son, he chooses his friend closer and distances his father away. This time wasn't, never existed in their days. Even among the Christians and the Jews, this didn't exist. It was a time that was very unusual to the people. That the mother will give birth to her daughter who when she grows up, she acts like she's the master and boss over her own mother. And their parents, in other words. And you will see the destitute, barefooted Bedouins who follow, who are sheep herders or uh, they are shepherds. They, are, they will be building very high towers in the sky, skyscrapers. Today we see this, many signs of this everywhere. The Bedouins are actually today in the Emirates, places like the Qatar. Now they're actually competing in this. Yatatawaluna fil bunyan means that they will be competing in making high towers. Who will make the higher tower than the other person? So materialism and uh, technology becomes the main motive of people in competing for. And if you look at society today, you will see that when people say we are an advanced society, we don't live in the caves anymore, what they're trying to tell us is that now we are more intelligent. With what? What are we more advanced in? Rasul Sallallahu said, يَتَطَاوَلُونَ فِي الْبُنْيَانِ They'll be competing about who can make the highest buildings, high rises. Meaning they'll compete with their technology, with their sophisticated engineering and building. What is so special about an advanced society who knows how to build machines or buildings or send satellites into space or build rockets or build atom bombs? The only thing I can think about is to kill people, to destroy the poor, to show off in worldly possessions for mere greed and power uh, of the way that Iblis used to show to Adam when he said, I am better than him, you created me from fire and you created him from soil and I will lead all of them astray and make them go into hellfire with me. Same thing. So we'll be competing with technology. But as for modesty, as for character, as for trust, as for family, as for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as for uh, justice, as for leadership in justice looking after people, as for you know, the uh, value of human life, of children looking after the orphans, the poor, the needy, the destitute, all of this will be lost. No one will be thinking about it. In fact, let me tell you something. In America, there was a re an article which read that in America, they make $50 billion on pharmaceutical products, on medicine alone. $50 billion on medicine. What does this mean? What is happening to the world? $50 billion annually of profit on medicine. These are people who are getting ill and sick. Are people getting more sicker and ill? Are there people pumping in these diseases? Are, 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 are people denying medicine to these people? Why are they making the medicine so extremely expensive? We hear about cancer patients. And we hear about all these other types of patients in this severe illness. 
leukemia. Juvenile leukemia as well. All these children who are dying of these, these diseases that have just popped up suddenly. And then we find that medicine cannot be afforded. You know, a brother said to me who has cancer, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure him. I'm coming to a point. He said, I went to the St. Vincent's Hospital. And over there they gave me this special medicine for my leukemia to treat me, to manage it. He said, this special medicine works in managing and relieves me of pain. But for one week supply, it cost $3,500. I had this subsidy, you know, Medicare subsidy, which only required me to pay $35. But then they stopped giving it to me because they said the government cannot afford to pay for the medicine anymore for its people. So they went to a lesser medicine and people are dying. Innocent people are being killed because medicine is too expensive. People are after capitalism just to make money and more money and to climb high and rise high. And I'm not saying this is the Arabs, I'm saying it throughout the world. 70-80% of people are surviving on about 40 cents a day. What is happening to the world we live in? My beloved brothers and sisters, in Islam the signs of the hour are divided into minor signs and major signs. These signs are mentioned in the Quran and Hadith to remind believers of the inevitability of day of judgment and to encourage righteous living. The minor signs include everyday occurrences and gradual societal changes. Examples are the spread of immorality, dishonesty becoming common, widespread ignorance and people competing in building tall structures. Other minor signs include the loss of trust in leadership and the prevalence of economic corruption. These events serve as early warnings that the day of judgment is drawing closer. The major signs on the other hand are extraordinary and catastrophic events that will leave no doubt about the nearness of the hour. This include the emergence of the Dajjal, the return of Prophet Isa salam, and appearance of Gog and Magog and natural phenomena like the rising of the sun from the west. Once these events begin, they will unfold in rapid succession leading to the final judgment. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.